In this video, I'm going to teach you about the acapella, pep, and flutter valve devices used as mucus clearing adjuncts. Okay. Here we have two different acapella devices. They are modernized versions of the flutter valve. The green one is intended for people with normal lung functions, and the blue one is indicated for people with COPD. Sometimes in the hospital, you'll hear the workers or maybe even the patients refer to these as pickles. Can you guess why? Okay. All right. Next, we have a threshold PEP device. Okay. To operate this, you twist this white piece up and down, and that changes the pressure that the patient has to exert against the threshold to create the positive pressure. Okay. Here we have another PEP device. This is an orifice PEP device. Right. And the patient blows into one end and we adjust the resistance as necessary for the patient. Right. And the goal for this one is to actually obtain a consistent output to put this, the, this little blue, I don't even know what to call that, a blue valve or plunger keep it floating between the black arrows here, right? And that way it's kind of similar to an incentive spirometer. And lastly, we have an old-fashioned traditional flutter. Okay, I'm going to take it apart for you to see because you don't see these very often in, in the clinical setting anymore. Right, we have this top piece here that has a series of holes around it for allowing air to escape. And then we have a, a heavy little ball bearing here, okay? and holder and then where the air comes through from the patient okay we've attached this tube here for sanitation purposes it's not typically part of a flutter all right reassembling the device Ooh, lost my marble okay you put it back together and when the patient breathes into this there the object is to exert enough force to lift this ball bearing out of its seat and have it flutter and cause different back pressures against their breathing. All right? I'll give you a demonstration. All right? I hope, I hope you can hear this on the video, but you can actually hear the air fluttering inside the device. All right? I'll do it again. You may be even able to see the, the tube and the mouthpiece vibrating with the back pressure. Okay, so, so as a mucus clearance adjunct, the traditional flutter valve is actually very effective and the main reason that we don't use it anymore is because there's no real way to adjust the pressure needed to achieve the fluttering. If you have someone who doesn't have a strong enough uh, expiratory output To lift this bowl bearing, then they're not going to have any benefits from that therapy. They're just going to waste their time on it. Okay? The modern version are these two. Okay? And we can adjust the difficulty on this with setting in the back. You know, if the, if the patient is extremely weak, we put it on a low setting. And if they're really strong or maybe they're a larger person with. We'll you know, bigger lung volumes and the ability to push it out better, we'll put it on a higher setting, whatever the patient is most comfortable with at a therapeutic level, okay? The same applies to all of these. You're aiming for a therapeutic level that is good for the patient. Um, indications for flutter or pet therapy are uh, serious congestion, lots of secretions, particularly thick secretions that are not quite congestion but need the help. Uh, patients with cystic fibrosis are often just, uh, receiving pet therapy because they have lots of secretions on their own. And uh, another common indication for it is atelectasis because the back pressure allows their, the alveoli to reinflate, gives them that opportunity. Uh, contraindications for this variety of therapy, the number one is an increased intracranial pressure. Okay, If you have a patient that has any kind of head trauma concerns, 
you want to make sure that the intracranial pressure is appropriate for this therapy, otherwise you're, you're going to ruin their day. <laughs> Uh, another major contraindication is an untreated pneumothorax because you're going to cause lots and lots of trauma to their lungs with the untreated pneumothorax because it's already it's already good. okay. Um, additionally, you've got a patient who's maybe uncoordinated that doesn't really understand the object of the therapy, perhaps a very young child or maybe. A, an advanced Alzheimer's patient would be inappropriate for this kind of therapy because you just you just can't explain it to them. Uh, let's see. If the patient's intubated, obviously this is inappropriate. You can't really do a lot about that. Uh, if they have an increased blood pressure or heart rate, these are also common in contraindications for any kind of respiratory therapy. All right. The process for this therapy, I'm going to use the pickle as our basis, basic. Okay. You're going to instruct your patient to do 10 to 20 normal breaths into the device. Tell them to take their time and not rush it. If they do, if they do this too rapidly, they can cause themselves to hyperventilate and this leads to lightheadedness and sometimes an increased heart rate or blood pressure. These are things that you really don't want to do. Okay, so take your time, and do 10 or 20 breaths, all right? You also want to instruct your patient not to puff out their cheeks when they're blowing against the pressure. If they have to do that, you might have to reduce the resistance on the device, okay? You want to keep your cheeks you know, normal. If they're having trouble doing that, tell them to hold their cheeks when they do it. You know, if you're blowing on a pickle, don't worry about feeling silly. Okay? <laughs> so you do that for 10 to 20 breaths. And after you finish doing that, you need to instruct your patient to do two to three huff coughs. Alright? What you want to do is have them sit up properly, and you can try to instruct them to take a breath in and exhale it while saying huff, 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 but most patients, they, they just have trouble with this concept. So the tried and true method is to teach them how to do the chicken huff. And what you do, you tell them to put their hands up and then their arms up, hook their thumbs under their armpits, take a breath, and exhale while they flap. And you'll go huff, huff, huff. And it's a perfect huff cough every time. All right. Use your judgment. If you think your patient is uh, too dignified to do the chicken huff, then try to explain it to them in the best way you can. All right. So you do two to three huff coughs for every 10 to 20 breaths into your device. And you take a pause, you know, so you don't hyperventilate or get lightheaded. And then you're going to start the process all over again. And you're not going to do this for, for more than 20 minutes cumulatively, okay? And it'll be, it's unnecessary, and it's just unnecessary to do it longer than that, okay? And uh, your patient should do this every couple of hours, at, at least. <laughs>